If you want to create a Gantt chart that you can share in Confluence without breaking the bank, I will show you three ways to do that. In fact, we will cover the roadmap macros that are available to you in Confluence. I'll also briefly cover what the difference is between a roadmap and a Gantt. The two get used fairly interchangeably, but there is some slight nuance there. I will then show you a couple other options that you can also use for making a Gantt chart and sharing it uh, in Confluence. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, let's cover roadmaps for scans and also what are macros. If you're not 100% sure of what the meaning of all of these words are, I will briefly, emphasis on briefly, go over it. So number one, Confluence comes with a couple roadmap macros baked into Confluence. What is a macro? Well, I'm so happy you asked. It's a widget type component that you can add in Confluence. So for instance, you can add a macro for an iframe, for instance, if you want to embed something, if you have the embed code for something. And similarly, there are macros for doing specific things in Confluence, like creating basic roadmaps, which brings me to Gantz and roadmaps. These two terms are often used interchangeably because really the output is pretty much the same in terms of how they look with bars showing how long projects and tasks take to accomplish. However, Gantz typically are more detailed. They typically provide a lot more nuance in JIRA speak, they'll often go down into the subtask or the task level, whereas roadmaps are typically higher level looks at strategic initiatives. Perhaps you'll only be showing the epics for various JIRA projects on the roadmap level. You're showing a higher level view. So that's typically the difference, the distinction between the two, but they literally can look fairly identical, and therefore, in JIRA land, in Atlassian land, you'll often hear people talking about the roadmap functionality within Atlassian's products uh, interchangeably with Gantt charts. Hope that was helpful. Now let's move on to the next step, which we will go into the specific macros that are available to you. So the first roadmap macro that you will most likely find when searching how to make a Gantt chart in Confluence is the Roadmap Planner macro. This is what it looks like. Let's go into Confluence and play around with it, and I'll show you some of the limitations, the benefits, how to use it. Alrighty, so this Roadmap Planner macro is discoverable when you're in a Confluence page and you hit backslash and then you go into Roadmap Planner. You choose that and voila, you will see something that mm, if you squint hard enough, it kind of looks like a Gantt chart, probably needs a little bit of work to make it uh, actually legible for other people. So the first thing you'll see here is these bars, these are lanes, and then we have a marker. So in terms of making this into a Gantt chart that is helpful for you, number one, you can edit what the bars mean. So let's say this is like um, finish QA or whatever task needs to be done. Um, what if this QA or this lane rather, we name it like, um, um, you know, merge to dev. And that's just what this lane is called. All the things that need to get accomplished for merge to dev to happen. Or let's just pretend the name of this project was like a uh, Confluence Gantt chart video. All the things that would have to go into making this video. And so you can have different lanes which have different bars uh, dictating what needs to get accomplished within each lane. Now these markers over here, uh, while JIRA doesn't have the idea or the notion of uh, milestones, these markers though 
can be used as such. So let's say you're like, um, you know, stakeholder review, and this is when the stakeholders you have agreed would need to look at whatever it is that needs to be looked at. So you can add lanes, it will automatically make it a new color, you can add a bar to whatever lane you're currently in. And you can also, I'm not a huge fan of this color schema that is going on, you have some basic color choices that you can choose from. So this is pretty much it. You can also choose if you want to have this view by weeks or by months and also the dates uh, from which and to which this Gantt will uh, be displaying. Now, the limitations of this roadmap planner macro, it's not actually tied to Jira data, so you'll have to manually be updating everything here. Also, because it's not really tethered to Jira in any way, the concept of data hierarchies, which is found in Jira, and I'm, I'm assuming if you use Confluence, you probably use Jira uh, and have set your data up in the hierarchical way that Jira is... Uh, structured around, that will not be displayed here. And also, as you saw, there was kind of a basic small selection of colors, not a lot of visualization uh, going on, and so it might not be as engaging as other roadmap or Gantt chart options. Next, let's go into the timeline macro, which uh, timeline is one of the two roadmap options that's available in JIRA. It's the option that's available to most people because it's available with the free and the standard plans. So let's dive in. So if you do backslash and you start to write in timeline, you will see Jira timeline where you can embed an interactive Jira timeline into your page. It's interactive because it's tied to your actual Jira data. And so unlike the roadmap planner option that I just showed you here, you will have needed to already have made a Jira timeline in Jira in order to embed it here. So you would paste a Jira instance URL and then choose the project, the board, and insert it that way. Now, the benefits and limits of this timeline chart is, number one, it is tied to your Jira data. So that's really helpful. If you're using Confluence, you're often also using Jira. However, the timeline cannot show subtasks, and it also cannot show multiple Jira projects in one view. Advanced roadmaps, which is only available with a Jira premium or enterprise subscription, offer those two functionalities, but Jira timeline does not. So that's something to be aware of. It also has limited color coding, and there also is no milestone feature, which is an important feature in Gantt charts to visualize key milestone dates that you need to hit for your project plans. So the next option I'm going to show you actually does have more color coding and pretty much has everything that is a limitation for this timeline option. So... Let's get to it, and I'll show you Visor. Let's move on to our next free option, Visor's Jira Gantt chart, which you can embed into Confluence. So this is an example of a Gantt chart. I will walk you through how to make one of these in Visor. So first of all, you import your Jira data. You choose the fields you want. We accept custom Jira fields, and you can even import the drop-down selections that you have in Jira, which is awesome. Then, uh, while you're importing, you'll need to choose either Visor's two-way sync, or you could even just do the one-way sync. The two-way sync allows you to also push out changes to Jira. In this case, because you're importing Jira data, the one-way sync could also work. But you'll definitely need to maintain Jira nesting. Visor honors the way your Jira data is structured, and you'll want to ensure that that is intact when you import your data. From there, your data will then appear in Visor's Jira spreadsheet and table view. Our spreadsheet table view is the backbone of Visor, but then you can visualize your data in other ways, like a Gantt chart. 
So after it's in this table view, you'll move on to step two. And in the lower left corner, you'll see add view. And next to table view, you will see Gantt view. That's what you'll want to choose. And from there, with all the data that you just imported from JIRA, you will be able to plot your data into a Gantt. Now, one really important thing to note here is you're going to need start and end date fields in order to plot your Gantt chart. Gantt charts are showing bars across time. So you need dates in order for the Gantt chart to plot that data across time. If you don't have start and end date fields in JIRA, because that's just not the way your team works, maybe you're very on an agile team and you just don't do that, you can make start and end date fields in Visor that do not get pushed over to JIRA in any way. It's a really helpful way to make your Gantt's uh, in Visor with your JIRA data without affecting how things are structured in JIRA. Now, once your Gantt is plotted in Visor, you'll want to filter it. And by filter, I mean choose, do you want to show down to the subtask level, just to the task level? Do you want to filter it by assignee? You can decide how you want the what data you want displayed, how much granularity you want. You can also choose to format it. And by format it, I mean color code it. And you can choose the exact colors that you want. And you can also add milestones, which is awesome because Jira actually doesn't even offer that feature. So that is a neat way to visualize your data. Once you have your Gantt exactly the way you want it in Visor, uh, you will choose the embed code feature in Visor and then put it in Confluence. So I'll show you what that looks like in Visor and then move over to Confluence and show you what it looks like to embed it in Confluence. Here is an absolutely gorgeous Gantt chart that I made with JIRA data. As you can see here, the JIRA connection field, I have JIRA data plotted in a Gantt chart. I added start and due dates in Visor because that actually was not in JIRA. And that allowed me to plot it right here in Visor. I was also able to add a milestone because when you're in Visor and you're plotting your data, you can choose to make things a bar or you can choose for things to be a milestone. So here there are milestones uh, next to bars. As you can see, I have color coded this. I have, I didn't actually filter it, but if I wanted to, I could. I want all the data in here. I'm not going to a greater length to show more granularity. And I have it just the way I want it. Therefore, I'm going to go to file and then I'm gonna go to export view and you will see that an embed link and an embed code shows up right in Visor. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then I'll see you over in Confluence where I will embed it. Now I went ahead and I added an iframe into Confluence that is, uh, you can find that by doing backslash iframe. And I put in the URL to my Visor Gantt there. And as you can see, it is here. I'm able to adjust the height and the width if I want. And one really important note is that you're going to want the width to be at least 1280 and the height 685. So by default, it's going to be very tiny. You're going to have to go in and hit edit and adjust the width and the height. One of the main benefits of using Visor for your Gantt chart is it's a free way to, bat, to bypass the limitations of JIRA's free timeline option. JIRA also offers advanced roadmaps, which allows you to show more than one JIRA project in a Gantt, to drill down to the subtask level. It does not offer milestones, but it offers other features that timeline does not. Visor offers all of those features, and you can create a Gantt for free. So that's awesome. 
I will say one limitation of Visor is that when people are viewing Visor's Jira Gantt in Confluence, they will be, you will need to grant them access in Visor. They're going to have to log in within that little widget in Confluence. So that is one limitation to be aware of. Uh, and other than that, though, you're able to share your project data that's in Jira in Confluence using Visor. I also wanted to point out that you can share your Jira Gantt chart that you made in Visor even without embedding it into Confluence. So if you're using Confluence because you want to share your Jira data or your project plans with folks who maybe don't access Jira, you can actually achieve that right in Visor. So once you make the Gantt chart in Visor, you can hit share, share it with various collaborators, giving them editor, owner, commenter, or just viewer access. You can create a sharing link that you can put in Slack or Microsoft Teams. And you can also share your Gantt chart that way. Or as I already showed you, you can embed it right into Confluence. And that's really it. If you are interested in trying Visor out, you can find us in the Atlassian Marketplace or at visor.us. Also, we have a lot of great info on our blog that goes over tutorials, best practices for Jira, Confluence, and other project management tools. So that'll be all, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.